Patrick Augustus Mervyn Manning was born in San Fernando on August 17, 1946. A South boy to his heart, Mr. Manning attained his primary and secondary education in South Trinidad, attending the prestigious Presentation College San Fernando, a school which has produced many national icons, such as former Prime Minister Bastio Pandey and music star Marshall Montano. Mr. Manning then went on to Jamaica where he studied for his Bachelor's of Science degree with special honors in geology at the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. He graduated in 1969 and after graduation, he returned to Trinidad and Tobago where he got a job working as a geologist for Texaco Trinidad Limited. Mr. Manning got his first taste of politics just two years later at the young age of 24 when he was handpicked by then leader of the People's National Movement, Dr. Eric Williams, to be the party's candidate for San Fernando East in the 1971 general elections. Mr. Manning ran for and won at the San Fernando East seat, making him one of the youngest persons to ever have held a seat as a member of parliament in Trinidad and Tobago. His first stint in parliament was evidence of the faith Dr. Williams held in Mr. Manning with Mr. Manning appointed as Parliament Secretary in one of the country's most important ministries at the time, the Ministry of Petroleum and Mines. Mr. Manning held that post from May 27, 1971 to February 10, 1973. Dr. Williams then took Mr. Manning under his direct tutelage and guidance, perhaps even grooming him for his future role with an appointment as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of the Prime Minister from February 11, 1973, a post that he held for three years till June 1976, prior to that year's general elections. Another five-year stint as a parliamentary secretary would follow, with him serving in that role from September 22, 1976, till March 29, 1981, a significant date in the nation's history, the day that his friend, mentor, and prime minister at the time, Dr. Eric Williams, passed away. The death of Dr. Williams forced a shake-up in the party rules and Mr. Manning was handed an increased responsibility and given the role of Minister in the Ministry of Finance and Minister in the Ministry of the Prime Minister from March 1981 till May 1981 and then as Minister of Industry, Commerce and Consumer Affairs and Minister in the Ministry of the Prime Minister from May 1981 till September 1981. In the 1981 general elections, Mr. Manning again won his seat and continued his parliamentary representation for San Fernando East as a member of the PNM under newly elected party leader George Chambers. His profile increased after the PNM was successful once again in that election as he was handed several portfolios including Minister of Industry, Commerce and Consumer Affairs and Minister of Energy and Natural Resources during that term from November 17, 1981 till October 29, 1986. A change in the political landscape saw the People's National Movement fall out of favor with the citizenry, leading to the party suffering a heavy defeat in the 1986 elections. The PNM won only three of the 36 seats up for grabs in the election, with the National Alliance for Reconstruction winning the remaining 33 seats. Of the PNM candidates who lost their seats, then political leader and Prime Minister George Chambers fell among the casualties and as such could not remain as opposition leader. Mr. Manning, however, won his seat and of the three PNM MPs was considered the best candidate to hold the office of leader of the opposition. This began his rise to the top as in February 1987, Mr. Manning was then elected political leader of the People's National Movement. He defeated Dr. Ainas Wills by 572 votes to 127 and began to turn around what he described as a party in exile. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Manning proclaimed that the PNM was in exile but with purpose as time was needed to build the new party and create the new society. Mr. Manning called for a purge of the party's undesirable qualities and attitudes and urged party members to understand clearly that the political life of Trinidad and Tobago was in a state of transition. His charismatic approach to leadership did the trick as Mr. Manning confidently led the PNM to the polls in the 1991 general elections. 
the elections saw a resurgence of the PNM, with the party this time winning 21 seats, including the seat Mr. Manning had represented since the start of his political career, San Fernando East. This win led to Patrick Manning being elected as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago for the very first time on December 17, 1991. After the success of the 1991 general elections, newly appointed Prime Minister Patrick Augustus Moving Manning had a clear vision for Trinidad and Tobago and was now in the perfect position to manifest it with hard work and the support of his government colleagues. This was a work in progress and the foundation was laid for improvements in the education system, the economy and infrastructure of Trinidad and Tobago over the next five years. After the general election in 1995, Mr. Manning once again became opposition leader and retained his seat as Member of Parliament for San Fernando East. He was elected Prime Minister once again in 2001 when there was a deadlock in the House of Representatives. Mr. Manning was appointed Prime Minister by President A. N. R. Robinson. A general election was then held on October 7, 2002, when the People's National Movement, with Patrick Manning at the helm, emerged successful. Patrick Manning was very well respected by the international community, who recognized his unique leadership style and his determination for Trinidad and Tobago to gain first world country status before the year 2020. Under his administration, there was a reduction in income tax from 35% to 25%. The GATE program was launched, making free university education available to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. There was also a substantial growth in the economy through our natural resources of oil and natural gas. Under the leadership of Patrick Manning, beautiful landmarks such as the International Waterfront Centre and the Brian Lara Promenade were constructed and launched. Mr. Manning also maintained a great relationship with our Caribbean neighbours and in 2003, then Prime Minister Manning was awarded the Guyana Institute for Democracy, the Democracy Prize, for his outstanding work in upholding the principles of democracy in the Caribbean region. In 2004, he was awarded the Caribbean Central American Actions Star of the Caribbean Award for his unwavering support of Caribbean neighbors in their time of distress. Mr. Manning also received an honorary Doctor of Letters by Medgar Evans University in 2007. During his tenure, the government of Trinidad and Tobago hosted several world leaders and royalty, including King Juan Carlos and Queen Sofia of Spain in 2008, and Chilean President Michel Bachelet in 2010. The country also hosted two world summits in 2009, the fifth Summit of the Americas and the first Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Former Prime Minister Manning also held the position of Chogam Chair. On April 9, 2010, Prime Minister Patrick Manning advised President George Maxwell Richards to dissolve Parliament, resulting in a general election to be held two years sooner than was constitutionally mandated. Mr. Manning later announced May 24, 2010, as the date for general elections. Mr. Manning and the PNM lost the election to the People's Partnership. Following the defeat, Mr. Manning officially resigned as political leader of the party on May 27, 2010, but remained as a parliamentary representative for San Fernando East. On January 23, 2012, Patrick Manning suffered a mild stroke. A press release from his constituency office stated, Former Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and Member of Parliament for San Fernando East, the Honorable Patrick Manning, last evening suffered a mild stroke. He is presently undergoing tests and is warded at the San Fernando General Hospital under tight security. Mr. Manning and his family would like to thank everyone for their continued prayers and support. At the time, there were unconfirmed reports which stated that Mr. Manning was suffering with paralysis of the right side of his body 
and other unconfirmed reports further stated that Cuban doctors were on the way to Trinidad to join the local medical team that had been attending to him. Worried supporters gathered outside the accident and emergency department of the San Fernando General Hospital early that morning as news spread that former Prime Minister Patrick Manning had suffered a cerebral embolism, better known as a stroke. Mr. Manning's wife Hazel and his sons David and Brian Manning spent more than five hours at the accident and emergency department, while a battery of doctors headed by Dr. Kanta Ramcharan conducted a series of angiograms to determine the blood flow within his veins and arteries. Less than one hour after he was brought into the hospital by ambulance, Several former government dignitaries, including former ministers Gary Hunt and Joe Neal Williams, were seen hurrying into the accident and emergency department. Staff from Mr. Manning's San Fernando East constituency office were also present, and some were seen whispering quiet prayers while he was being treated. Patrick Manning spent the next several months undergoing treatment at a hospital in Maryland. Posts on his Facebook page and press releases from his San Fernando East constituency office said the former Prime Minister was doing fine and was making steady progress with respect to his recuperation. His wife Hazel said, He's always laughing, chatting and talking. Known for his dab address and infectious laughter, Mr. Manning was regarded as the consummate politician by those who worked alongside him. Even in the face of illness, he continued to be positive. Patrick Manning returned home on July 30th after completing almost six months of medical treatment in the United States. A large contingent of PNM supporters were on hand at the north terminal of the Piaco International Airport to welcome home a frail looking Manning and his wife Hazel. According to the Parliament's online records, Mr. Manning's last full debate contribution was on December 9, 2011 during the debate of the Administration of Justice Electronic Monitoring Bill. In 2014, reports surfaced that the former Prime Minister was considering offering himself as a candidate in the next general election. Political analysts and others of the public share the view that he, Patrick Manning, had reached a zenith of his political career, having served as political leader, Prime Minister in several PNM administrations, two of which he truncated, and having been a member of parliament for a very long time. Following the general election last September, Randall Mitchell replaced him as San Fernando East MP. Patrick Manning also declined the order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. In 2014, former Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa offered the order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to both Patrick Manning and former Prime Minister Basdeo Pande. However, Mr. Manning declined saying he would not accept any awards while still serving as an MP. Quote, I wish to respectfully decline the publicly announced nomination by the Honorable Prime Minister to have me receive the Order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, this nation's highest award. The primary reason is rooted firmly in my principled stance to not accept any TNT awards while serving as an MP. End quote. The former Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Patrick Augustus Moving Manning, was admitted to the San Fernando General Hospital on June 24, 2016 with a high fever, following the removal of a wisdom tooth. Following a battery of tests, doctors discovered that Patrick Manning had acute myeloid leukemia, AML, a rare, very aggressive cancer of the blood involving bone marrow and red and white blood cell tissues. The specific cause of AML is not clear, but it progresses rapidly and is typically fatal within weeks or months if left untreated. Research shows that there is a very low cure rate of 5-15% to 15 for persons over 60. Those who are unable to withstand intensive chemotherapy typically live for only 5-10 to 10 months more. In an interview, his wife Hazel Manning said, while in hospital, Patrick Manning said he knew he was going to die and told doctors to do what they had to do. Family members confirmed that Patrick Manning passed away peacefully on July 2nd at 8.15 a.m.
and immediate relatives who had been with him had been holding his hand when he passed on. However, the clan, although strong, is in deep sorrow. They added, there are many tears. Tributes were made by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, President Anthony Carmona, Opposition Leader Kamla Prasad Bissessa, party and political colleagues, regional counterparts, and from associates all over the world, as far as Ghana. A statement from President's House indicated that President Carmona commiserated with the family, expressing words of comfort, peace, and prayer at the family's personal loss and Trinidad and Tobago's great loss, stating that Patrick Manning's death is a monumental loss to the Caribbean as well as Trinidad and Tobago. President Carmona via press statement said, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago has received the heartbreaking news of the passing of former Prime Minister Patrick Augustus Moving Manning. As a statesman and politician of some 41 years, he executed his responsibilities with genuine care and love for the people. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said, Up until his death, Mr. Manning remained a source of guidance and inspiration to a generation of national and regional leaders who still sought his counsel even after he left active public life. Opposition leader Kamla Prasad Bissasa added, It is with deep sadness we heard of the passing of former Prime Minister Patrick Manning. On behalf of all in the parliamentary opposition and the United National Congress, we send our heartfelt sympathy and prayers to his wife Hazel, his sons, and close relatives. Congress of the People founder Winston Dukaran said, Mr. Manning's political life was one of courage and one in which he never swerved from his commitment to building a modern Trinidad and Tobago. St. Vincent Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who visited Mr. Manning while he was in hospital, was in shock. Quote, this was a visionary leader. No political leader in Trinidad and Tobago after independence has been a greater regional integrationist than Patrick Manning. In recognition of Mr. Manning's passing, flags are being flown at half-mast at all public buildings and foreign missions until the day after his funeral. Saturday, July 9, 2016, the day chosen for the service and burial to allow time for formalities such as allowing the body to lie in state in North and South Trinidad. Patrick Manning's body will lie in state at the South Academy for the Performing Arts on Thursday. The body will also lie in state at the North Academy for the Performing Arts on Friday. A book of condolences has been opened between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. and is available from Monday to Friday at both locations from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Books of condolences have also been opened at Borough Corporations in Arima, Rio Claro Mayaro, Chaguanas, Point Fortin, and Tobago's Assembly Legislature. There's also a condolence book at Balazé House, Port of Spain. Patrick Manning, who joined the PNM as a youth, went on to become its third leader in 1986, rebuilding the PNM after the NAR's crushing 1986 victory. A geologist, he was Trinidad and Tobago's fourth and sixth prime minister over the period 1991 to 1995 and 2001 to 2010. The longest serving MP, he represented the PNM in San Fernando East for 44 years. Patrick Augustus Mirving Manning, 1946 to 2016.